Yo, what's up? We're playing more Saints Row 4. And we're gonna go to the ship. It's a simulation. Ah. Whoa. What's up? Let's go talk to everybody. So, where's, uh... Here, right here. You know, I really miss hanging out. Do you want to do something? Uh, what do you have in mind? What? Outfit, fun Shondi suit. Light bulb not included. Ha ha. Cool. Can we talk to her again? Kick ass, boss. It was really cool hanging out with you again. And I helped fight back against the Zin. That's what we call a win-win. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I can... Nice. Now I can shrink people. Fucking cool. That's amazing. God, oh my god. Yes. I want to do it right now. But I can't because I'm scratching my head. <laughs> Alright. Anyone else around here? No. Let's keep on going around. Hey, sup? You have done well. Now I will no longer be the cause of you not completing all the tasks available for you to do. Here is your immediate reward <laughs> as well. Pleasure doing business. Sweet. Thank you. Nice. Lightning. Telekinesis lightning. Oh my god. Yes. That's awesome. Alright, let's go down here. Whoa. Where is he? There he is. Thanks for the help with that. At least now I don't feel like I'm flying blind here when it comes to Zin programming. Yeah. Here's that upgrade for you. Though I know you love the outfit more. Of course I do, Matt. Yeah, no. Sweet. That's the best. Mind control blast. Fucking sweet. Paranormal bromance. What the fuck? Hey. Ben if King. This is going to be authentic. I need to make sure to get every last detail right. Big finish, huh? Alright, let's do it. Yeah. Nice. You want to change your middle name to motherfucking. When you put these clothes on. Benjamin motherfucking this is gonna King. This be epic, player. Thanks for your help. I'll be sure to put you in the special banks. Gee, Ben. Thanks. Yeah. What's this? Lightning buff element. It's like I just did two quests back to back. Just from talking to him. Because I went and did all the other things. Nice. If we ever get off this ship, first thing I'm doing is find a big place of my own to set up in. It's a little tight in here. Not used to such small spaces. Yeah. All right. Hey, it's Johnny Gat. Look, I'll be honest. I don't have an objective. I just want to blow shit up. No? Yeah. Nice. Twice as much black holes. Twice as many black holes. Whatever. Now that's what I'm fucking talking about. The dream team yeah. is back. I had a great time, Johnny. Whoa, now it recharges his black holes quicker. What the fuck? Just get more things. Just keep on You'd talking to people. You'd expect an alien spaceship to have more guns on it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I know. I know. Nice. Where's Pierce? There he is. He's laying down. We've been doing this a long time now, right, boss? And I know that you know that I know you're the best at doing this shit. <laughs> so how about we prove it one more time? What I, do you say? I know that okay. you know that. I Wait, know. did that make any sense? <laughs> Whoa, inflatable ray costume. It's got to be purple. Ooh, I knew you could get it Sweet. done. Though in yes, all honesty, yes, yes. that was just a list of stuff Kenzie gave me to do. But I knew oh, you'd yeah. be the right person for the job. Thanks, boss. Pierce, you know, I'm going to kill effects. you later. <laughs> you just say he's gonna kill him later. Wait, inflatable ray victims now explode. Oh, you know nice. what? We need our own theme song. Every crew on any space TV show always has their own song. <laughs> I gotta start putting some music down. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's go use the computer and do this like text adventure thing. All right, text adventures. Oh, wow, there's eight parts. Fuck, okay. Our story begins in the remote village of Zinshire, a hamlet just west of Zinport, in the country of Zinland, on a planet known only as Zin. By nature, the Zin people are uncultured and slow-witted 
lot, is easily entertained by such diversions as arm wrestling and counting the spots on one's back. The people of Zinshire most especially fit this description, so I'm sure you can already foresee the struggles I endured in life. Continue, the first of those struggles were my parents. My father, a simple butcher, was a small man with a fierce temper. Of all the things I learned from my father, the one that sticks with me the most has to be the proper way to butcher a Zinping. Thirst for knowledge? I don't know. Most assuredly not. My father's butchering technique was deplorable. Alright, thirst for knowledge. You're not even paying attention. My father is as dim as the second son of the 14th Zinuary. Hey, lust for power. My father, that was thick as the back hair on a newly born Zinfant, did indeed have the unquenchable hunger for control. While he never managed to rise higher than the head of a simple village council, he nonetheless carried the dream. My mother, on the other hand, a gifted seamstress who married far below her station, wanted me to enjoy the things so many others could not. I remember clearly on the eve of my 13th birthday, her taking me to a camp for rowdy children. Alas, Singrat's camp for a righteous youth was booked for the season. Oh. One might think a place such as Zinshire would not support a fine bakery, and you would be right. It closed after a year, but it was not for a lack of trying on my mother's part. She wished for for her only child to have an appreciation for the finer offerings of life, and she began my education with Zinkar's delectable pastries. Not only did I sample the goods at Zinkar's shop, but I spent a summer there, sweeping the floor, tending the counter, and even learning a bit of the culinary arts. I took to baking with zeal, clients enjoyed my baking goods, and I became known throughout Zinshire for my fresh fruit tarts. Alas, the climate of Zinshire is not conductive for the growing of fruit. What the fuck? Okay, cream puffs. Ah, I can still feel the layers of crisp dough flaking gently on my tongue or wash up in a smooth release of scrumptious cream. Even though Zinkar's endeavor was not long for this world, I continued to sell my renowned cream puffs door to door, a business which thrived. I must say, doing well enough to supplement my admission to the most prestigious private school in Zinland. But that, my friend, is another story. Zinyak, Galactic Overlord and Head Emperor, Supreme of the Zin Empire, A Life, by Zinyak. This is Zinyak's life? So he was like at a pa- My youth, like that- That's so fucked up. Alright, you know what, let's just- let's do it, let's do them all. I had acquired the money to attend the finest school in Zinland, but that was just the beginning. While I would love to say Zinkov Prepper- Victoria Academy embraced me with open arms. The truth of the matter is I was not the finest student. In order to gain admission, I had to endure rigorous physical and academic testing before they would grant me access to their legendary halls of learning. As is usual for admission to a school of such a claim, the first of these tests was a scholastic aptitude exam, killing my own parents, trying out for a sport. Killing my own parents. Uh, what? <laughs> a scholastic aptitude exam. As my mother's wish, Zinkov Prep was an institution that prided itself on its classic offerings. To that end, it only accepted candidates that displayed academic prowess for the promise. So, it was that I endured my weeks of standardized testing and training prior to my interest. <laughs> okay, I am proud to say that I took the studies well and managed to bring up my scores across the board. Still, there was one subject above all others that I had a particular affinity for. As you may have already guessed, that subject was art history. Though it pains me to admit such faults, art history is not my was my weakest subject. The life of a museum curator, how shall I never know you? Oh, how I shall never know you. Alright, how about science? Nope. Literature. All the written word I had, like most in, learned to read and write in utero, but that was all very dry text such as manuals and design documents. It wasn't until this far more serious pursuit into academia that I came to love the classics. How surprised was I that some of the finest literature in the universe came from a tiny watery planet more than 10 million light years away. While it would be some time until I visited that seemingly unremarkable way station, I'd fallen in love with its artistic offerings already. One author's work in particular catched my imagination. Can you guess the scribe responsible? Dr. Seuss! The good doctor's work is among the finest in literature, there's no doubting that, but I did not get lost amongst his colorful characters and impeccable rhyming structure as much as others. Aw, Charles Dickens? Uh, I shan't abide any author who dares suggest frugality and the demand for a proper work ethic are grounds for otherworldly intervention. I don't care if the worker's boy is on crutches, that man had a business to run. No, absolutely not. Uh, Jane Austen. Jane 
sweet, sweet Jane. How like my mother's dreams you are, even now, all those years later, just the thought of Emma, Eleanor, and Elizabeth's exploits and romantic missteps brings a lump to my throat. Oh, the intoxicating back and forth between Miss Bennett and Mr. Darcy, how I could read those lines toward infinity. It was my celebrated essay on Jane Austen's body of work that caught the attention of the Zinkov Administration's board, who not only allowed me entry into their fine institution, but secured my later position as head of the English Language Appreciator Society. The English Language Appreciator Society. Oh, fuck. Thus was my love of literature cemented and access to Zinkov Preparatory Ac Academy assured, which is where I met the teacher who would help me find my life's true purpose. Though that is another tale, the written word. Wow. Zinkov Prep. I clearly recall my first tentative steps into Zinkov Preparatory Academy. I was a lad from the countryside, coming into the big city, eyes wide and mind eager. I had never seen a building so large or so many finely dressed young people yearning for knowledge. It was the first time in my life I ever felt I was somewhere I truly belonged. Of course, not all the Zinlings there were courteous, studious minded folk, particularly it was long before I crossed the path of a brutish young man named Zinfax. We instantly loathed each other. It was obvious from the start that Zinfax took umbrage with my coat of many colors, lower class upbringing, prominent cranial crown, lower class upbringing. No, typical no. I was now entering the proud and prejudiced filled society I had read about so eagerly just a few months prior. While Z Zinfax was a boor and constant thorn in my side, I found solace in my studies. Literature had engaged me eagerly uh, early on sorry er, literature had engaged engaged me early on but the offerings of Zinkov prep allowed me to expand into even higher minded subjects such as intergal intergalactic warfare and how to exploit diplomacy for personal gain what the fuck that's not good what world of what a world of knowledge there was to explore more than any of the Zinkov family professor Zinlo informed me in my later days or informed my later days I remember clearly it was just two weeks into my first year when Zinlo pulled me aside after class and said to me, Zinyak, you're a natural born leader. Zinyak, these people are all your inferiors. Zinyak, ne never let anything or anyone stop you from pursuing your dreams. Uh, has anyone told you that before? What a remarkable thing to say to a formative lad. And he was right. I, as the poor son of an ignorant butcher, had made it to the finest university on the planet. I wasn't just pursuing my dreams, I was living one. Those words kept me strong through, through four years of demanding study, kept my mind clear from physical distraction, and are to thank for my graduating with honors from Zenkov Preparatory, a first for anyone from the hamlet of Zinshire. Upon receiving my diploma, I knew exactly what to do. Kill Zenfax. Rather short-sighted, don't you think? Uh, inter-military service. Not before I sell some unfinished business. <laughs> Kill Zimpax and then enter military service. Order of operation, don't you know? Yes, I admit, I let my personal dislike for that heinous bully overcome me and I snap Zimpax's neck like old bark flaking off a dying oak. Holy shit. My time at Zinkov Preparatory now at an end. I entered yet another phase of my life, one that would take me to a great many exotic locations and allow me to realize finally my true potential. Thus ends my years as a plucky child. Next we meet, I shall regale you with the tale of Zinyak, the young man. Wow. Part 1, 2, and 3. Holy shit, now let's read part 4. Military. The early years. After my time at Zinkov Preparatory Academy, I did what all young people on Zin must do. I entered the military. Prior to my days at Zinkov, I admit I did not look forward to this rite of passage, but after I reached, I relished the idea of owning myself into the specimen, specimen I would later become. Basic training was, as it designed to be, a particular sort of hell. I don't know what the rules are where you, uh, where you come from, reader, but military training for the Zin army consists of a grueling eight week course that pushes the recruits to their breaking point. Some did not survive the training and were sent off to work into the mines or forces in the Zin join the Zin National Orchestra, famous across seven galaxies for how hideous their music is. In order to endure the training, I relied upon thoughts of my childhood, a more innocent time in my life, my iron will and drive to do whatever I must to excel, or uh, a manufactured hatred of the enemy. Manufactured hatred of the enemy, a wise man once said, without a target we were all just bullets in the wind. I wrote that in my journal last week, and it's true. 
Whenever you find yourself facing a seemingly insurmountable challenge, it helps to envision all of the turncoats, opportunists, and megalomaniacs that are just waiting for you to fall so you can swoop down and pick meat from your bones. With a furnace of pure hatred burning inside of me, nothing would stop me from overtaking any challenge set before me. It was evident that in the later days, in the latter days of my training, that I was going to excel that excel at conquering worlds. It was evident that I had no conqueror's blood cursing through my veins. I took every task with gusto, never accepting anything but the best of myself and all those around me. I had vision, I had drive, I had everything needed to seize the universe by the nebulas and make it mine. Oh, it was evident that even then that I had conqueror's blood. Oh, sorry, I didn't read that right, sorry. After basic, I entered service and was sent to the front line of the Great War that was brewing on planet Bedard. There I led charge against the great Bedarian, or Bedard, Bedardian commander Franz God. Using my innately keen insight, I surprised Franz God by murdering his soldiers and putting their heads on pikes, sneaking into his base under the cover of darkness, playing selections from the Zen National Orchestra at high volume. Nobody deserves that. <laughs> Alright, sneaking into his base under the cover of darkness. While it may sound like a simple tactic, you should be aware that the average day on planet Bedard lasts an excruciatingly long time, but I and my charge held our position until the perfect moment to strike. We infiltrated Franzgard's compound, trampled his men under our mighty boots, and shattered the door to his bedchamber, whereon I pounced upon the fool and smothered him with his own pillow. Even now, looking back, I can't help but smile. From there, I led the charge after numerous enemies of the Zen Empire. Soon, the entire Bedardian army fell before us, and we had yet another notch on our already impressively carved belts. Fuck. Rise to power. A magnificent victory under my belt. My military superiors saw fit to bestow upon me a, a meritorious service in the glory of the almighty Zim commendation and my first of many promotions recognition breeds contempt though uh though and i made many enemies wait recognition breeds contempt though and i made many enemies throughout my military career but perhaps none more scathing more heartbreaking than zinfob the brutus to my caesar zinfob served me well against the bedardian army but his pride got the best of him when he questioned my authority in front of the troops, questioned my character, questioned my readiness to command. Questioned my readiness to command. Sight of my unquestionable bloodlust, cold and calculating demeanor, lack of conscience, all the things that were held in such high regard during training, Zinfob dared to suggest that I was unfit for high level command. I was brought before my superiors in a mock tribunal, held simply to satiate, to satiate Zinfob's whim, I assure you where I was called upon to defend myself against those allegations. Complying with the tenets of the charade, I took my seat as defendant. As clear as the strained cries of a fallen foe, the charges were leveled against me. Against each one, I railed against my accuser, uh, explained myself in a clear, concise manner, remained silent. Explain myself. Admittedly, I may have used some coarse language as emphasis to underline my points, but I conducted myself as one ought during any legal proceeding. After carefully explaining myself to the council, they saw my point of view and it dismissed Zimfob's case against me. Cool. Afterwards, I hunted my accuser down and killed him where he stood. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's funny. That nastiness behind me, I not only continued to fulfill my role within the Zen army, but I excelled at it. After many more successful terrestrial campaigns against our foes, the officials saw fit to give me my own ship, promote me to Emperor Eric's statues in my honor. Uh, give me my own ship. Indeed. No longer was I a simple passenger on our interplanetary death vessels. Now I had my own now I had my hand firm upon the rudder. Metaphorically speaking, of course, interplanetary death vessels are steered by complicated navigation systems. Now a celebrated member of the Zen army with a seasoned crew at my command, I blew up planet Zen and never looked back. Zen may be the most cultured celestial body, but it's still my own. Or it may not be the most cultural body cultured celestial body but it's still my home through a gala in my own honor or headed out toward adventure uh gala nope i do not have to throw galas in my own honor all right uh headed out toward adventure it was time to leave terra firma behind me and venture toward the stars after forcibly conceiving convincing my crew to celebrate 
my newly appointed position with a soiree in my honor, we lifted anchor and spread our sails, again, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> towards destinations just ripe for the picking. And that, dear reader, is where my tale gets most exciting. Damn. Now, part six. Holy shit. This is long. This is like a fucking book. I'm gonna need to take a drink before we read this one, part six. Alright. Like a siren, calling ships to the rocks, the velvety expanse of space has been a harsh mistress to many. To me, the unconquered reaches were a challenge I not only accepted but yearned for. So many poor souls, blithely unaware of how mediocre their existences were without a firm hand to guide them toward greatness. Oh, how I longed to be that hand. I am not a soul easily satisfied, so I knew my dream destination must be a planet that could challenge not the collective might of the Zen army, but my own fragile ego. My political acumen, my tactical instinct. My own fragile ego. Hey, say that again and I'll kill you. <laughs> my political acumen. As if anything could. Okay, my tactical instinct. The trustful victories I had accumulated in my prior campaigns often failed to adequately test my keen tactical instinct. The maneuvers and strategies employed by so many of my foes were woefully pedestrian on their best days. I knew somewhere in the celestial womb a leader must e exist who could properly challenge me. How fortunate I was that I had to eradicate 12 civilizations before coming toe-to-toe -to -toe with the talented and well-trained forces of the Jet Yang Theocracy. Despite what you may have heard about the people of the Jet Yang Quadrant, I assure you they were ahead of the rest of, the, of their martial prowess. Perhaps most impressively, the Jet Yang had mastered biomechanical fighting mechanics, the art of diplomacy, or planetary shield technology. Uh, diplomacy. The Jet Yang theocracy, so called diplomats, could be bested by an amateur debate team. Oh, that's funny. Biomechanical fighting mechanics? Despite centuries of effort dedicated to that pursuit, all of their attempts at melding flesh and technology resulted in nothing greater than automated harvesting machines. Planetary shield technology. By harnessing their geoform the geothermal energy of Jet Yang's molten core, the theocracy were able to power a Dyson sphere like <laughs> No way, a Dyson sphere like shield around their entire planet. Oh, that's funny. It sparkled like the sun in it sparkled in the sun like a chorus line of stars pirouetting in the sheerest glimmer of light, the way it's shattered in the wake of our neurotic or neutronic lasers was simply breathtaking. Upon our arrival on their planet's surface, the head of the theocracy, an imposing figure named Bishop Quiz Quirkzug, pleaded for not only his own life, but the lives of his people. Always a fair man. I agreed to meet him on a level field of battle, mano a mano as two gentlemen. I even let him select the contest. Much to my surprise, he chose a board game. <laughs> as part of their theoretic doctrine, the Jet Yang do not believe in flat surfaces. <laughs> Alright, arm wrestling. And I thought I had left such uncultured diversions back on Zen. I learned then that this so-called sport had reached a far wider audience than I had hoped. Yes, Quirksug chose to challenge me at arm wrestling. How oh, for a society so advanced in technology, thought I, could they be so taken with grasping hands and pushing? Little did I know that the cephalopod cephalopodian anatomy of the Jet Yang combined with the curved surfaces that pass as tables because <laughs> they don't believe in fast flat surfaces that's awesome allowed them great leverage at this sport oh ho how clever Quirksug was luring me into a trap that played upon my own prejudices well done well done indeed as it turns out the winner of that match was me no it was a draw no Quirksug fuck yes Quirksug uses an Comical advantage to best me at that infantile test of strength. After shooting him, though, in uh, no, ad after shooting him through his enormous eye, I congratulated his corpse on a job well done. <laughs> Given the giving the Jet Yag people no quarter, we made hasty work of their pathetic planet. And to this day, I keep Quirkzug's desiccated tongue in my pocket. I rub it for luck. 
What the fuck? He has his tongue in his pocket and he rubs it for luck. Okay. Though I wasn't aware of it prior, the Jet Yang homeworld was a rich source of gemstones and minerals in, in rare reserve on other planets. Nice. With resources in high demand at our disposal, I was able to fund many more conquests throughout the richest of space. A fascinating story I will tell you soon. Damn. Part 6 is done. Now let's go to part 7. The second last part. Cool. As you indubitably are already aware, the Grand Jet Yang victory was just the beginning of my storied career in the Zen Army. I still had numerous conquests awaiting me, including my first venture out, venture out toward a place the native scholars once called Via La Cida. All right, I, possessing astute foresight as I do, coupled with my at times all-consuming need for control, I knew that. Before I set out to do anything more, I must find a second in command, acquire more ships, get some decent food on board. Oh, acquire more ships. Not to be immodest, but my fleet was already quite impressive. Oh, decent food? Do you honestly think that I would travel all the way to the Jet Egg Quadrant without bringing the finest ships? Find a second in command. Even I cannot be everywhere at once. I knew in order to keep my crew appropri appropriately subordinate while still being able to have some essential me time, I had to have someone I could trust implicitly to oversee the orders I gave. Someone who could be my eyes and ears and also tend to my every whim without question. It was a plucky young soldier named Zinjai who stood cranial crown and shoulders above the rest. I knew he would make I know he would be make a fine lieutenant, but as is customary to prove one's successful worth, I first administered a sc scholastic aptitude test. Oh, callback, yes, quite humorous of you. No. Ritual beatings. Those are already part of our daily routine. <laughs> Ritual beatings. I saw no need to beat a dead horse. You see what I did there? I made a pun. It was a good one, too. Alright, a quiz to determine his understanding of basic etiquette. I was not able to appoint someone as my military surrogate and manservant who was unable to appreciate proper propriet, uh, propriety and tradition. I knew that if anyone were to even attempt to fill my proverbial boots, that they had to be able to do so in any conceivable situation, so it was I constructed a battery of examinations designed to test his etiquette across all manner of occasion. They, re they really were brilliant, as if I do say so myself. I am proud to state that Zinjai passed every test in spectacular fashion, though we did almost have an incident when we were attacked prior to the dinner course of a fine meal. Zinjai's brother died during an examination on proper cross-cultural greetings. A rapid Zin pig got loose upon the ship during a rousing debate on intergalactic politicking. Try again. Having endured my father's atrocious meat preparation as a lad, I forbade the use of Zin Pig on any onboard recipes. Okay. Zinjai's brother died during an examination on proper cross-cultural greetings. Nope. As was, as was culture in his native home of Zinberg, Zinjai faced his brother in a duel to the death at the age of three years old. Zinjai won. Oh, I should note that duels to the death are used in some cultures as greetings. A most curious tradition, that. We were attacked prior to the dinner course of a fine meal. It was a regrettable lapse in judgment on the part of famed Bunian tactician Ariel the Furious, the Bune Armada Artatus, in mid space during the most important segment of Zinjai's testing. After destroying the Bune fleet ship and flaying all the crew members, I beheaded Ariel the Furious with a bread knife and threw his remains into the onboard incinerator. Zinjai and I then went on to enjoy the most lovely meal, full of fresh beaten steaks and delightful com and delightful conversation. His testing over, I formally named Zinjai as my lieutenant slash servant, and we continued our trek into deep space. Per my grand plan, I set about calling the universe of its weakest cultures first, starting with the Kolger Kolger Nerfer tribes of central Alspazia. The Goat Spray Alliance, the people of Earth. Ooh, do you really count Earth as one of the weakest cultures in the universe? You really should think higher of yourself. Alright, these guys. Yeah, the Kojurt Nerfer tribes have been a blade on central Alspazia since time immemorial. Really, I was doing everyone a favor by raising these th heathens to the ground. But did the unified nations of central Alspazia show any gratitude at all? Of course not. 
Monster, they cried. Psychopath. Alright, nothing short of planet-wide genocide was going to shut them up, which thankfully it did. From there, I continued my path conquering, conquering every planet that stood in my path. Yet, despite the sense of unparalleled accomplishment, I felt something was lacking. It was not until later that I would stumble upon my greatest achievement, my defining moment. Part 8. My defining moment. Yes, I held the keys to the universe in my grasp, yet something was missing. These victories, numerous as though they were, felt hollow. I felt my I found myself wanting more, needing more. What could I possibly be missing? I had everything. Civilizations trembled when I announced my presence. My own army lived in fear of my wrath. What could I possibly be lacking? Then, like an evolutionary link, crawling from the depths of primor of a primordial soup, it hit me. I had taken so many lies. For what purpose? Conquering was not enough. I needed to test them, to challenge them, to collect them. It was then I decided to build a museum dedicated to the greatest cultures of the universe, a petting zoo, or the simulation. The simulation. I could not trust those who fell before my might to roam around unsupervised in a real world, but a virtual one? That was another matter entirely. It came to me as a vision. A vast interconnected web of simulated worlds designed not only to contain the best and brightest of the universe, but to break their wills and make them subservient to me, Zinyak, the galactic overlord and head emperor supreme of the Zimmen Empire. Oh, did I forget to mention I killed my predecessor and claimed his throne for my own? My apologies for the oversight. I tasked Zinjai with overseeing the simulation's construction. We would hold the physical bodies of my fallen foes in a nutrient-rich suspension, designed to accommodate even the most peculiar metabolisms. Meanwhile, their minds would go on in a world of my own creation, based on each other, on each subject's fondest childhood memory, deepest fear, favorite food. Deepest fear. Yes, everybody aside from your humble narrator is afraid of something. Familiar loss, a straying loved one, anonymity, anonymity, uh, anonymity. Spiders, and by subjecting each victim to their deepest fear to replay their most dreaded moment over and over again until their psyche shatters and their minds become malleable putty in my eager fingers, I can control them. I can control everyone. Once the simulation was completed, all I needed to do was start hooking up victims, throw a party, find a test subject. Uh, throw a party? What's that idiom about counting chickens? Uh, find a test subject, yeah. And who better to test the simulation upon that than my right hand man? Sinjai was not eagle, eager to partake in the simulation, but after a brief, though intensely painful discussion, he saw the intensely painful, comma, discussion. <laughs> he saw the benefits of the architect being the first to walk into his own building. For hours, I heard Jinjai, Sinjai's screams echo throughout the ship, like the mellifluous song of a child in the morning. And I knew that then the simulation was my raison d'etre. It would set the standard for forward thinking empires throughout the universe. And if, I, and if any should ever match its brilliance, I would crush them and claim their design for my own. Cool. After extracting Sinjai from his personal nightmare, he gave the most wholehearted approval. When asked what his version of hell was, he said, A life without me, a life with only me, a life. Speak a life spent cleaning the lavatories of the Zen mothership. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, Sinjai didn't tell me what his deepest fear was, and I didn't press the matter, for I had other things to do. With the simulation as my crown jewel, I took to universal conquering with renowned zeal, and I found a uh, sorry, I found a pleasure in forced subjugation of sentient life forms I th never thought I'd have again. My enemies didn't simply fall by my sword. Their wills were snapped like the bones of a mouthy subordinate. I no longer had only the echo of their dying words to remember them by. I had a whole world of twisted imaginary and deep-rooted doubts and phobias. Oh joy. Oh cascading bliss. And I could visit them whenever I wanted. I had complete control. I held their brittle consciousnesses in my hand and I could play with them like flicking seeds into the wind. The simulation was not perfect. Nothing is. Even the masterwork Venus de Milo is short a couple appendages, but it was mine, and it was beautiful. For those who tested my patience by attempting escape, I had protocols in place. 
When needed, I intervened personally, though it was rarely necessary. Many of the subjects thought they were exceptions to the simulation's rule, but I put every one of, every one of them sum summarily back into place. So it was, I went about collecting the exemplary specimen specimens from cultures throughout the entirety, no entirety of the known world, with one exception, a certain destination whose exploitation I wished to savor, a place whose artistic contributions had first set me upon my path. You know which one. There was someone there I especially wished to meet, and with the time-bending capability of the mothership I could, but also I knew any planet capable of literary work of that caliber must also breed warriors unlike any other. I was excited, reader. Every part of my essence shivered with anticipation. With the might of the Zen Empire behind me, I set out toward the far corner of the universe, toward a new galaxy to conquer a planet I had only enjoyed through its culture. Earth. Le Fin. Bubble Ball. So, there you go. We just played the text adventure. So, uh, after reading that, that's a lot, that's a lot, and it makes me think, maybe, um, maybe Jane Austen's gonna make an appearance in the game? You know, maybe, maybe the story's gonna have to do something with Zinyak and traveling through time and, and getting Jane Austen and maybe, maybe Jane Austen's the, the final crew member? I don't know. That'd be really cool. I don't know. Author Jane Austen. Oh my god, that'd be, that's way too... Oh my god, that's fucked up. So I need to talk to Kinsey and Asha and Shandi. Damn. Still. Because I didn't do that yet. Alright. Whoa, hey Johnny. Running around. So Playtime's over. Now for the real challenge. Bring it on! Yeah! Whoa, energy sword costume. Sweet. Well, well. I admit that I'm impressed. You may just have what it takes to cut it in MI6 after all. All I need now is a British accent. Haha. <laughs> oh, I need that as a British accent. I hate yeah. to say it, but the ship is almost homey. Yeah, yeah, god. Oh, there's Kinsey down here. Hello. That makes one door open in downtown. I think I can find another weak spot in there. So funny how there's... Away. Right. It's so weird. There's like... It's weird as hell. There's like freaking beanbag chairs on this plane. Um, not on the plane. On the freaking spaceship yep, this thing. This is a piece of cake. You know, I'm doing most of the work. Come on. Got, oh my god. Another gateway. That's it. You did great. With all those access points back to the real world, I'm yeah. a lot less worried you'll get trapped there now. Well, at least I can shop just about anywhere. Now. Sweet. Oh my god, another one. Look at that. That's crazy. So what's up with the quest? Meet Chandi. I'll go do that right now. Hey, cash. 50k. Nice. Let's go talk to Shandy. Don't don't down where is she? Is she up here? In the front? Yeah. It's been a hell of a ride, uh -oh. hasn't it? That is an Yeah. You've changed so much. Too bad the dialogue's so long. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, whatever happened with that guy who won your dating show? Puerto Rican yeah, Thunder God? See, talks about, what he about that guy? All, but performance Bravo. didn't live up Why to Why doesn't me? he just get to Look, it? Look, I gotta tell you something. Get to it. It always drove me crazy that you had exes in every city and were willing to go on a dating show, but not once did you ever give me a shot. You never asked for one. I'm asking now. Then let's make up for lost time. Oh yeah. Ridiculous. Wonder if the game keeps track on how many times you have sex with each character. If each I was character. an asshole alien overlord who had a bunch of his people killed and technology destroyed, I'd certainly be upset about it. Yeah. So go us! Now we can focus on killing that bastard. Cool. And that date with Keith, I'm guessing. Yeah, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 murder bomb mind thrower. That's cool. I don't want to talk about what happened in my simulation, so don't ask. What's next? At least on the ship, I can get a little peace and quiet for my other half. Okay. I'd kill for a nice hot shower right about now. Nice hot you know, shower. One with privacy. Yeah. 
Hot shower. Hot shower. White power. White power. Hot shower. Hot. Sh you know, like on that episode of South Park, with like where all all the clan members are like, hot shower. Hot shower. Pretty funny. Anyways. Whoa, look at this. All we gotta do is loyalty missions now. And other shit. Oh, powers. New upgrades and elements. That's right. What's here? Yeah. There's nothing else there. What about here? Nope. Wait. Complete challenges? What? I still need to get... That's crazy. I still need more challenges. And then down here, oh wow, look at that. Everything. Everything. Whoa, passive aggressive. Got them all. Sweet. Yeah. So, guess what we're gonna do next? Loyalty missions. Ready for it. First time to save the game, time to save the game. And buy some upgrades because I'm totally at level 50. Oh, unlimited stamina. That's something I should unlock. Alright. But health, nope. Damage. Ooh. That's. Oh, that's a challenge one. Okay. What else? Over here. Explosive damage. Alright. Let's go. Gateway cash ammo. That's another challenge. Oh, right here. Bam. Unlimited SMG. Unlimited shotgun. My god, eh? Unlimited rifle. Oh, yeah. How about unlimited pistol? Crazy shit, eh? Amazing. Now. What's the next one? We need how much money? 42. That ain't too bad. And that's it. Just 42 for that. And then after that is gang abilities. Ooh. Shotguns. Cool. Oh, nice. Now they can also carry rifles. Fuck. Hey, I need to do that. 35 on the health increase. That's it. Health increase and then those two. Fuck. That's awesome. Alright. Save the game. Nice. Oh, yeah. 100% simulation hacked. Level 50. That's kick ass. And I'm 76% on the game. Because I did all that crazy shit. 29 missions completed. What? Why does it say 29 missions completed? One right here. It says 2137. I don't know. Anyways, take a break. And we'll play some more Mass Effect. I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll play some more Saints Row 4. Later. Peace.